always from a dead tree. Don't, don't take the bark from a live tree. Hello, <laughs> welcome to another video. As up north, as up north. I've had to come out of the woods that I'm in just to get a bit of light to film this bit because it is dark. And I was like, because I didn't do an intro for a while, I was getting my fire going and all that. I was like, ah, oh, when can I? I sort of just run out of time, so this is it. Welcome. There's not going to be a lot of talking on this one. I'm just out to enjoy a stew and have a night in the Amok Hammock and I'm looking forward to it. I've already got my stew on, I'm about to put my hammock up, but the lighting's not great in there, so I'll try and show you, but if not, <laughs> torchlight later on or whatever. The headline is, I'm up north. Let's go and get this hammock strung up and spend an evening in her. So I keep checking out the fire, and also keep warming my digits up a bit. She's a cold one. I've had to dig a proper big hole because it's all pine needle and just mulch in that particular area where I started and I was like, oh, should I start another one? And I was like, no, I've got, I've got time. I've got much light. So I've had to go really deep through all the layers of pine needle and stuff to get to some hard gear. Made a massive hole and that's where I've me well, that's where I've got my fire. Now flamboyant. Oh this light mate, look at it. Can't see anything. Don't matter. Don't matter. It do not matter. Just a little fire that I can keep ticking away. It's quite stealth as well because it's in, in a hole in the ground so you can't really see it. Even though I do have permission to be in these woodlands, it always feels nice to be a little bit stealth. You never know what nut jobs and fiends are kicking about in the shadows. 
Let's get this hammock. Oh, it's too dark, man. You can't even see. I've missed my window, haven't I? Missed my window of opportunity. A video or two back, I did a full review of this hammock. So if you want to see how to set it up and what it looks like in that, doing that, then you can check that out. But for now, it's these ones. Big reveal. Can't see out because it's got dark. Because there. Uh, look, verge getting dark. And now look. Can you see it? <laughs> no. There she is. Sort of see with light on, can't you? Sort of. Easy to set up. I've got my uh, Trekology pillow. I'll leave links for everything below. Trekology pillow. My Rab 900 sleeping bag. Just to be on the safe side, I've got my Big Agnes Fusil Ultralight camping quilt just to go over the top because I don't want to be cold. One issue that I've found, well, I've sort of sorted it out, but it's difficult in it in these conditions when you can't see now. But we persevere, Percy. <laughs> like that. Ooh, the problem with this hammock is fun. Yeah. So, what shit's happening now? Look. There, sliding down. Becomes like that. A big wall of hammock. I guess you've just got to keep everything central because you're not lying along the ridge line, are you, sir? So, all your clobber has to go head end. That's that. Also, do you zip it up, do you think? Like, so I'm leaving it like this. I'm going to put my tarp over the top. But you don't want bugs getting in, do you? Although, how would they get in? They just have to fly in, I guess. But yeah, I think zip it up and then you keep all bugs out and then zip it open. Just like a regular hammock. If anyone's got any, if anyone who owns one of these hammocks and has got some top tips, then let me know. Someone give me a real good top tip, actually. There's a, a little, um, cord that comes out of the bag on here and he said oh there's a clip behind your head clip it on it helps keep the thing off your head even more so we'll test that out when we get in thanks for your tip so i've not been around a fire for a bit so i'm going to replenish my char cloth i've cut some 100 percent cotton off an old t-shirt close it in and then we just chuck that on the fire. Let's play it up, man. Jacket Spodola. Stunner. Oh, <laughs> all buttery and stunning. Mouth's watering, mate. Mouth's watering. Uh, wow, that's reduced by half. Look at that. Unctuousness. Just get some on on to on yak it tatas. The bay leaves can go. It's like a little bit of a bone in the middle. Meat, mate. That's the meat. Falling to bits. It's an absolute banger. We've done a banger. That's the bone that was in the middle. Totally cleaned out hollow. So all that marrow has just oozed out into the stew. Get them woody herbs out of there. And let's pour it on. Stop mucking about. Ridiculous. Plate's warm. She having it to what? Cooking for about four hours. Jacket potato, beef shin, which is a, a cheap cut. That was like four quid or something. And then beer, stock, bay leaves, garlic, rosemary thyme. You've seen it all go in. How's it gonna taste? <laughs> two by two brewing, that's the brewery. Two by two brewing. It's just a f uh, pale ale, four percent. Absent friends. <sighs> That's good. Mm. I salute here. But yeah, money having one beverage. This is the real deal. How can you even see it? I've shown you it. Light on. Look at it in all its glory. It's absolutely glorious. It's hard with lights, I can't see anything. Oh man, I'm just gonna get stuck in. Down here where I can actually see. We'll see how we get on, look. Light on it. There you go, look. 
<laughs> why do I? Why am I even? Get me out of way. I, just, right. Forget it. <laughs> Stop it. Wow. Carrot. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Don't sleep on the carrot. And that's why. Some of this tasty. Oh man. When you cook a tatey like that, just on the side at fire, wrapped in tin foil for a long time, it doesn't need butter, it just becomes like it's buttery in itself. And the bone marrow and fat that's rendered down in this is buttery enough. Oh, it's so tender and tasty. <laughs> that's what the best. And using the shin because it's just, it's a cheap cut. I rubbed it in flour and cooked it off a bit first. And the flour helps to thicken the stew. That's so tasty, unctuous. And perfect for a cold night in the woods. And it is cold. Like I'm, I'm having to get right close to the fire and I love it. Right, I'm just going to have to sack you off I'm afraid because... I just want to enjoy this, it's so delicious. I was cooking that for maybe three hours, four hours, and I'm just doodling around camp and stuff, and every now and again I get a waft of it, I'm like, oh, I can't wait. And here it is. Right. Oh. I'm gonna get stuck into this and stare at my fire. Lampers. It's about seven o'clock. Fingers are freezing. Face is a bit cold. But talk about comfy, mate. I don't want to get out of this thing. I'm just going to chill in dangle. I'll tell you one thing though. Trekology pillow. Shat it. Kept going down at night. I don't know. I think I might have just about had it with Trekology pillows. I had one that lasted me absolutely ages <clears throat> and was amazing. And then the last two I've bought have just shat it. Not good enough Trekology. Oh my god, it's so comfortable. So, and I was proper warm and toasty with Rab 900. I think it's the Ascent 900 and me uh, a down quilt as an extra bonus. Lovely stuff. I'm going to dangle here and wait for the sun to pop its head up. The line goes from this little thing on the ridge line and it tensions back behind my head so that it keeps, this line keeps the bug net off me even more. Our char cloth from yesterday, which went in as 100% cotton, and now it's charred, and that will take a spark. And then, we'll try and chuck it in this, I mean, it rained last night, so everything is a bit on the damp side. Try and blow that into flame. Now you could use your fire steel, or you could use flint and actual steel. Just find an edge, get that on there. There we go. You see that's lit there. There we go. Right, it's starting to rain. We're about done, the rains are starting to come. On the outskirts of the woodland, it is blustery. It was a weather warning, 45 mile an hour winds, but it's been all right in here. The tops were swinging somewhat rotten last night. I was a bit like, is this, is this legit? But it was all right. 
it rained a bit in the night, but that just aided me in my sleep because I love it, the sound of the rain on the tarp. I'm gonna put this fire away properly and pack up. Jobs are good in. I've left no trace and I've enjoyed that one. That stew was just 10 out of 10 for the stew. Um, as I say, I didn't do much waffling on this one, but I didn't feel like I wanted to or needed to. I've enjoyed it for exactly what it was and I needed to do it. It's been a while since I've just been out in the woods on my tod and just done a bit of cooking and just hung out. And that hammock is comfortable. The only gripe I'd have is the bed is a bit it's a bit chunky when you're putting it away, it takes a few rolls to get all the air out which could could do your head in a little bit when you're on a long distance hike but it's minor, it kept me warm. Or having a piss in the night, if uh, for us gentlemen in a normal DD hammock you can sort of zip it open, wang out at side and just and take a piss but and this one it's a bit of a more of an effort, you've got to take all the stuff out, get out, go for a piss, get back in like a normal human would. But apart from that, I mean, so far, so good. I'm gonna keep on using it. And then uh, if anyone's got any tips for like, keeping all stuff inside it, actually, I, I did think that it was gonna be a struggle getting in and like getting the sleeping bag on and stuff once I was in there. But as long as you move far enough to the back, it's all just as simple as it is in a normal hammock, if not easier, cause it's wider and you've got more room. And that's hammock chats. <laughs> it's good to be back. I don't even know why I'm bending down like this. It's just I can't be bothered to put you higher up. So that's just it's the way it is, mate. Right. Look after your shins, your knees, your elbows, each other, your noodle. Au revoir. Goodbye. I'm not even going that way. Just looks nicer, doesn't it? See as late as. <laughs> I thought I'd end it on a on a wild swim, a cold one. Oh, it's a frosty, frosty one. I like to end my wild camps or my little adventures. Oftentimes, I'll end it with a a cold dip, and whew, this is going to be a cold dip. But I want it. It calluses your mind into doing things. <laughs> <laughs> into doing things that you don't want to do because you're just like well get up and do it and the less you do it the less likely you are to do it because if I've not done stuff like this for a long time my brain's just like no don't do it it's too cold it's too stupid don't do it but if I'm regularly doing regularly doing it then my, my mind's just callous to the idea and so it just strengthens you in all aspects of your life not just getting in cold water with everything Cool. Oh. <laughs> He's splicing legs up a little bit. <laughs> oh no. Ow. Oh. That's cobwebs blown. Facing just to sort of activate the mammalian dive, mammalian dive reflex. <laughs> Whatever, mate. Freezing nipples off. Woo! Spliced and diced. Absolutely stunning. What better place to end it than here? Look at that. Yeah. If it's still December when this goes out, and you want to be in with a chance to win the full, a full brand new hammock hammock camping setup i'll leave a link below so you can enter i think it shuts on uh i think it's the 20th of this month oh, so if that's still open go grab a ticket but thanks for joining me take care of yourselves <laughs> and for now much love i love you like